Hi friends, welcome back on our YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss a new series of physics that is statistical mechanics. We have already discussed about classical mechanics, now statistical mechanics. So in today statistical mechanics, we are going to discuss about postulates of classical statistical mechanics. So let's start our current lecture of statistical mechanics. In this lecture, we will discuss about what is statistical mechanics, what is phase space and density function and also about postulates of classical statistical mechanics. So first of all, statistical mechanics. Statistical mechanics is a branch of theoretical physics that studies using probability theory, the average behavior of a mechanical system made up of a large number of equivalent components where the microscopic realization of the system is uncertain or undefined. So this is our statistical mechanics. Now phase space and density function. So first of all phase space or gamma space. In classical mechanics the position of a point particle is described in terms of three Cartesian coordinates x, y and z and the state of motion of particle is described in terms of velocity components x dot, y dot and z dot or momentum coordinates px, py and pz. So in classical mechanics the position of a particle is described by three Cartesian coordinates and state of motion of particle is described in terms of velocity components or momentum coordinates. Now we imagine a six dimensional space in which the six coordinates are x, y, z and px, py, pz are marked along six mutually perpendicular axes in the space. So here we imagine a six dimensional space in which there are six coordinates and out of six coordinates three coordinates are Cartesian coordinates and rest of three coordinates are momentum coordinates and all these coordinates are marked along six mutually perpendicular axes in space. The combined position and momentum space is known as phase space or gamma space. So phase space or gamma space is actually the combination of position and momentum space. So three coordinates are from position space and rest of three are from momentum space. So we have a six dimensional imaginary space which is the combination of position and momentum space and this six dimensional imaginary space is known as phase space or gamma space. A point in the phase space represents the position and momentum of the particle at some particular instant. So here we are showing a two dimensional phase space. Out of two dimension, one dimension is related to position and another one is related to momentum. Now we have a point in this two dimensional phase space and the coordinate of this point is x comma px. Now density function. Let a classical system has a large number of molecules occupying a large volume V. So here we consider a classical system containing a large number of molecules N and a large volume V. Generally the value of number of molecules is about 10 raised to power 23 molecules and the volume is about 10 raised to power 23 molecular volume. So it is clear from here that the number of molecules are very large and also the volume is very large. So n is very large it means n tends to infinitive and also v is very large so v tends to infinitive. But the ratio of v and n is represented by small v 
and this small v is actually a specific volume which is a finite number since v and n is very large or it is infinite but the ratio of v and n is a specific volume and it is a finite number the system will be regarded as isolated in the sense that the energy is a constant of motion so the system which we consider here will be regarded as isolated in which sense in the sense that the energy is constant of motion i state of the system is completely and uniquely defined by 3 and canonical coordinates and 3 and canonical momenta 3 and canonical coordinates are q1 q2 q3 n and 3 and canonical momenta are p1 p2 p3 n so the state of system is completely and uniquely defined by 3 and canonical coordinate and 3 and canonical momenta so here we have a 6 n dimensional space therefore the dynamics of the system is determined by the hamiltonian h and this hamiltonian is the function of momenta and coordinate that is the function of p and q also del h by del pi equals to qi dot and del h upon del qi equals to minus pi dot these equations we have already derived in classical mechanics and the link of that lecture is given in description box so del h by del pi is equal to qi dot and del h by del qi is equal to minus pi dot since energy is conserved therefore the locus of all the points in gamma space satisfying the condition h equal to e defines a surface and this surface is known as energy surface of e the path always stays on the same energy surface for a macroscopic system having n particles and v volume n is very large and also v is very large and energy line between e and e plus delta e a distribution of points in gamma space is characterized by a density function rho and this density function is a function of p q and t and it is defined by rho at d3 and p d3 and q d3 and p is from canonical momenta and d3 and q is from canonical coordinate because here we have 6n dimensional space and out of 6n 3n are related to canonical momenta and 3n are related to canonical coordinate and this is equal to number of representative points contained in the volume element d3 and p d3 and q located at pq in gamma space at any instant t according to liouville's theorem liouville's theorem is a separate lecture and we will discuss it separately so according to liouville's theorem d rho by dt equals to 0 and rho is the function of momenta coordinate and time it means d rho by dt is actually del rho by del t plus sigma i equal to 1 to 3n del rho by del qi qi dot plus del rho by del pi into pi dot is equal to 0 this is from liouville's theorem and since del h upon del pi is equal to qi dot so we replace this qi dot by del h upon del pi and also del h by del qi is equal to minus pi dot so we replace this pi dot by minus del h by del qi it means this equation will be in the form del rho by del t plus sigma i equal to 1 to 3n del rho by del qi into del h by del pi minus del rho by del pi into del h by del qi is equal to 0 now what this equation represents geometrically this equation represents that the distribution of points in gamma space moves like an incompressible fluid so this is the geometrical meaning of this particular equation in equilibrium state rho does not depends on time 
it means rho is the function of momenta and coordinate only so del rho by del t equals to 0 so we replace this del rho by del t by 0 and hence this equation will be sigma i equal to 1 to 3 n del rho by del qi into del h upon del pi minus del rho by del pi into del h by del qi equals to 0 and what is this this is actually the definition of Poisson bracket so from this equation we can say that the Poisson bracket of rho and h is equal to 0 thus in equilibrium state the Poisson bracket of density function rho and Hamiltonian h is always 0 now postulates of classical statistical mechanics it is based on the following postulates postulates of equal a priori probability now what is the postulate of equal a priori probability it says that the probability will be equal at every point of the system according to this postulate the probability of finding the phase point for given system in any region of gamma space is identical with that for any other region of equal extension or volume so if we have two portion in a system and the volume of both portion are same then the probability of finding the phase point for given system in any region of the gamma space will be identical or the probability of finding the phase point in both the portion of the system will be same and this definition can also be written in the following form for a system in equilibrium all accessible microstate corresponding to a given macrostate are equally probable thus in thermodynamic equilibrium the system under consideration is a member of an ensemble with a density function and this ensemble is actually microcanonical ensemble because there are three types of ensemble microcanonical ensemble canonical ensemble and also grand canonical ensemble and we will discuss separately about all three types of ensemble so in thermodynamic equilibrium the system under consideration is a member of an ensemble with a density function density function rho is constant if Hamiltonian lying between energy E and E plus delta E and outside it rho will be 0 thus all members of the ensemble have the same number of particles n and same volume V now we consider a function f and this f represents any measurable property of the system and this f is actually the function of momentum and coordinate if the postulate of equal a priori probability is useful then the average value of f from different method have the same results so either we find the value of f from this method or from this method the value will be same or equal or result will be same now first method is most probable value of f and what is most probable value most probable value of f is actually the value possessed by the largest number of system in the ensemble so the value possessed by the largest number of system in the ensemble is actually the most probable value of that particular measurable quantity now second one is ensemble average of f ensemble average value of f is equal to integration d3 and p d3 and q f rho divided by integration d3 and p d3 and q rho and rho and f both are the function of p and q both the values of f that is most probable value and the ensemble average are nearly equal if the mean square fluctuation is small so if the mean square fluctuation is small then the most probable value and the ensemble average give the same result mean square fluctuation is actually ensemble average of f square 
माइनस स्क्वायर ऑफ एनसिंबल एवरेज ऑफ एफ डिवाइडेड बाय स्क्वायर ऑफ एनसिंबल एवरेज ऑफ एफ सो मीन स्क्वायर फ्लक्चुएशन इज वेरी स्मॉल इट मींस इट इज वेरी मच लेस देन 1 सो इफ दिस कंडीशन सेटिस्फाइज देन मोस्ट प्रोबेबल वैल्यू एंड एनसिंबल एवरेज गिव द सेम रिजल्ट इन ऑल फिजिकल केसेस mean square fluctuation is equal to 1 upon n in order and since n is very large so this value will be very small since n tends to infinity so mean square fluctuation is very much less than 1 and if this condition correct then there will be no difference in the result which we obtained from ensemble average and the most probable value Thus, most probable value of f and ensemble average of f both have identical value because mean square fluctuation is very much less than one. Here we end our session. In today's session of statistical mechanics, we have discussed about postulates of classical statistical mechanics. Goodbye.